Now let's add some particles. For this one, we're going to keep it really simple, actually. So in the shake null, let's add a particle system. And by default, that's just right between these two, because that's where this null is positioned. And we want these to be spraying in every direction, because it's kind of this energy force that's between these two that's going to be shooting particles out. So the spray angle will be 999, 999, 999. I think 360 by 360 by 360 would also have the same effect, but hitting 9 is just a little bit quicker, so I just kind of default to that. And the speed, I think 90% in the speed randomness would be nice, because some of these particles I want to be moving a little bit slower. Now in the particle settings, the scale should also be quite random, maybe 50%. The lifespan can be longer, 2 seconds. And then the tilt, let's delete this default value and just change the random to 999. And the spin to about 100 degrees in the randomness. So now we have this nice bit of particles shooting out. I think it'd be cool if they slowed down after they were emitted. So let's add some drag to this as well in the force. Under drag, turn that on. And we'll do linear and rotation. And what happens when you add linear drag is you often have to increase the speed a bit. So let's change the speed from 0.2 to 0.5. Yeah, I think that looks good. And to make this look a little more magical, we can add some acceleration and have it go in the positive y direction, so they're moving up. Maybe even just 0.1 is enough. So now we want to emit particles the closer these get together. So we already have this screen pinch and this clamp set up. So we need to control the birth rate of this. So let's make a patch for that. And I think all we need to add is one more patch in here. If you type in range, you have two options here. There's two range, which takes a 0 to 1 value and changes it to a, any numbers. And opposite to that is from range, where you take any numbers and put it into a 0 to 1 range. So for this one, we want 2 range. So by default, we start at 1. So the minimum will be, let's see, how is this going to work? Let's just try it out. OK. So by doing a minimum of 100 and a max of 0, it feels counterintuitive because you think the max would be 100, but because we're starting at 1, these are kind of flipped. So the closer this number goes to 0, which is the minimum, the closer we get to 100. So as we start pinching, the emission rate will go higher and higher until we're finally at about 100, or very close to 100. It looks like 99 point whatever. So now we got some action going on. And this isn't the Queen's Gambit, so we don't want these chess boards to be flying around. So let's add a material to this. So because this is kind of like an alien technology, let's have some fun with these particles and make them a little bit more technical and less organic. So in the emitter, let's change the shape from plane to cube. And then in this material, rename it really quick. So because we deleted our lights earlier, these are all rendering as black. But in our material, we can turn on physically based and then add that environment. And we should try to match the rotation we have on this other material, just so it's consistent. We have 87. And a lot of times when you change stuff in Spark, it'll reset your simulation or your simulator. So we have to keep kind of pinching that together. Now to make these shinier, let's crank up the metallic, keep the roughness low, and let's turn down this color just so we're left with more of the reflection and a little bit less of the actual color. And you can see they're all 
kind of facing the camera, they're all flat on. So we need to add some rotation to this. We have the spray angle already turned up, but under the particle settings, let's turn off billboarding so they're not always just facing camera. And that helps a little bit. We can go further and actual, actually change the angular velocity. And then switch the rotation to randomness of 999. So angular velocity is kind of the speed that they're rotating, and then rotation is just the rotation that they're emitted at. So it might be sideways, it might come out straight on, but it's spinning, which is these values here. And we do have some drag on the rotation, so we might need to turn these values up more. Looks like 500 does a pretty good job. Now this is looking pretty cool. Let's try playing with the material a little bit more. If we change it from alpha to add, we get a more holographic look. Screen would be another good option. Screen's a little less intense, which I think looks better in this case because it doesn't totally cover up our main object. So let's see how this is looking. Let's restart it. We have these two pieces floating in sync. When we start getting closer, I think the, the particles might come on a little strong to start. So let's go back in the emitter. And let's change the speed dependent on the scale as well. So let's add a patch for that. And we want it to be the higher speed, the lower this comes. So let's grab another two range. And again, this is a little confusing, but we want the speed to end at 0.5, but maybe start at 0.1. So let's restart and see if that works. So right now the speed is at 0.2, and the closer they get, the faster they shoot out. Maybe they're starting a little fast. We could even go into the negatives here, I believe. So instead of 0.1, we can go down to negative 0.1. So when they start, yeah, it looks like that's working out pretty well. And then when we get all the way in, they're at full blast. And you can see they're popping off. So let's add a little script in here to fade those out. The only script I ever use is this particle fade. And once you copy it into your project, there's a copy made, so you can edit that freely. And let's change this name to Cube Particles. Then copy that, so that we can just paste it in here. And this will make it fade out, and then I think they slightly scale up with this value. Yeah, so now they scale up and they fade out, which is a pretty cool effect. And I am quite happy with how I set this up, but I just want to show you a different way that we could have done this. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space. So instead of using a two range, we could have used a mix. And for this mix, we would use this zero to one value as the alpha. And then these two values would be pretty much the same as these. So let's see which is which. If we start with a value of one, I think this bottom one will be active. Right, so we would start with 100 and end with zero, or vice versa. So now as we scale these in, the birth rate increases because this value is going from zero to one which is the alpha that's controlling the blend between these two values. So it's basically doing exactly the same thing as we're doing up here. It's just a different way to think about it. So up next, we're going to add some distortion for once these pieces reach close enough together.